Hi folks, Dave here, AF5DN, and today I'm going to talk to you about making your own network patch cables. Now the topology, there's a lot of different network topologies, but the one I'm talking about today is Ethernet, and specifically the Category 5E, or Category 6 cable. Now there's a lot of different colors of this cable <coughs> available and some people don't care what color they are. Uh, in our server room we use color-coded cables to designate different functions on, in the network. And these little uh, RJ45 connectors. This is a Belkin RJ45 connector. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to take this cable and stick this thing on the end of it. Okay. So let me, I'm going to readjust the camera a little bit here, and then I'll uh, I'll show you. Okay, so here are the a uh, little bit better close-up of the cables and the connector. And uh, <clears throat> just for the the sake of the camera, I'm going to be using this blue colored one here. It seems to uh, like the camera a little bit better. Now some of the tools we're going to be needing, you're going to be needing a pair of diagonal cutters. Um, these are actually flush cutters, which is what I prefer. It's a flush cutter, not a diagonal cutter. You will need some form of strippers. Now you can use a pocket knife if you're very careful and to not cut the uh, inside uh, wires. And definitely need some type of crimper. Okay, so the first step in this is going to be to strip off some of this wiring. And I prefer about maybe an inch or so to start with. And again, you can use a pocket knife to do this, but just make sure you don't nick any of these small inside wires. <clears throat> okay, so the only challenge in putting one of these guys on there is to get the wires in the correct order. Now I'm talking standard uh, patch cable, I'm not talking a crossover cable. Um, if there's any demand for that, I'll do a video on that separately. But the reason why I like using a little bit longer here is because it, it allows me some room to get these out and manipulate them. So the first thing you have to do is, is unwind the wires. And I usually unwind them in the pattern that they need to go into the cable. So I start with orange and white. And then I come over to this side. Now here's a trick. When you're dealing with this cable, uh, depending upon how you turn it, you will find that the wires kind of lay in the proper order. Uh, so just kind of play with that a little bit. And on this side here, I'm going to unwind this guy. Now this is a, uh, a way to build your dexterity. <laughs> uh, I've done many thousands of these things. Okay, so I usually do the orange first, then the brown second. The next one I like doing is the blue. And you'll see why here in a minute. Now all of these colors are, are going to be side by side by side. In other words, the orange white will be next to the orange. The blue white will be next to the blue. The brown white will be next to the brown. Okay. Now the difference is going to be the green wire. So I'll do undo it last. Okay. And the green wire is split. The green white goes down between the orange and the blue and the solid green goes down between the blue white and the brown white so now you can see why I leave a little extra here when I'm making this because it's easier to get these kind of fanned out where you can get the colors in the right order okay so that's the uh, <clears throat> the proper color pattern we're going for orange white orange, green, white, blue, blue, white, green, brown, white, brown. 
and you notice it's you alternate white alternate solid and now the next trickiest part is to getting these together and inside the connector okay so here's a little tri trick that I do I use my uh, my pinchers here and I try to pinch this now that I've got them all laid, uh, laid out fairly well I try to pinch this guy down like that and then I just pull these together using this this excess bit up here and you can see I'm kinda okay you don't want to get in a hurry I just kind of work these into and you see here's my cross where the green is crossing so I'm gonna make sure I hold that so that it doesn't get away from me and just kind of work them out to where they're pretty well straight now comes the diagonal cutters or in this case they're flush cutters now just be mindful that these are angled so if you cut in straight like this uh, your wires will be angled you have to actually turn it slightly so that this part of the cutter is 90 degrees to where the connector is going to go I'll just pop that in there again kind of make sure it's uh, kind of hard to see from that angle the camera is kind of distorting it a bit it actually looks like it's it's uh, bent but it's it's not okay so let me just cut these guys off there we go nice and flat I've maintained my color pattern now there's two sides to this there's a side with the little tab and then the side with the with the uh, copper and at this point you want to use it <coughs> with the side with the copper not the side this side the side with the tab goes down and put that in here now <clears throat> the trick here is if you just try to shove them in you're, they're going to get all crisscrossed so I actually lay them down on the bottom of this and kind of put just a little bit of downward pressure that downward pressure will help when I go to slide this in there into that connector and I believe, see, these are not being nice to me. Let me try this again. All right, there we go. See, even after doing a couple thousand of these, you can get them crisscrossed up. So <clears throat> you can see the, uh, the, uh, let me show you a problem here with this. This is a good example of what you don't want to get, and I don't know if you can see this or not. this little copper piece here has to penetrate the wire when you crimp it this little piece right here crimps onto the uh, insulation the outside insulation so in this case if I were to crimp this 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 outside insulation is actually preventing these little wires from going up in there and that's probably because I I didn't get it the first time so the simple trick to that is just kind of pull this insulation back a little bit now there are exact measurements of this stuff but you'll find you probably really don't need to be doing the exact measurements after you've done these four or five hundred times all right so now I've been playing with this I'm just going to double check make sure my colors are lined up right and you can see that one is not that one got away from me. Of course, doing this and doing it and trying to talk are two different things. Alright. Okay, we may have to uh, get ornery with this guy here. Alright, here we go. alright so there we go there's our color patterns back in the order we need them let's try this again I 
All right. Now, if you can see this or not, I'm not entirely sure. But now, this little copper bit lines up with the wire. Let's see if you can see it better on this side. This little copper bit lines up with the wire. And you have enough of the outside installation to come up underneath this little crimp here. So at this point, before I crimp it, this is where I just double check my color codes. White, orange, orange, green, white, blue, blue, white, green, brown, white, brown. And then you take your little handy dandy crimper, put that guy in there like that, and give it a crimp. And there you go. All right, I went ahead and, uh, and put a end on the other side of this little short nubby cable uh, because what I want to talk to you about is testing them when you're done. Now, if at all possible, um, get one of some sort of a cable tester. You don't have to, but there may be a lot of uh, trial and error the first few times you do it. and. Uh, I'm pretty confident with mine. I can 98.8% .8 of the time get them right without having to uh, without having to use a cable tester. This one's fairly inexpensive. Uh, you just plug your cables in there. There's a mode switch on the side. You hit that and it runs down through and tells you your cables are all right. This is a little nicer one. It's digital. And uh, it has a lot of different functions. One of the functions it does, as you can see, it gives you a wire map. It literally tells you one for one, two for two, three for three, four for four. Okay. So that's it. That's how to make a patch cable for Ethernet using Cat5e or Cat6. Thanks a lot. Bye.